Hi, I'm Daniel Jacobson, a program manager on the Visual Studio team. In this video, I'm going to show you how we have made the Universal Windows Platform Tools in Visual Studio 2017 better than ever before. From a much improved getting started experience, to XAML Power Tools, to Visual Asset Creation Tools, we believe there's a lot to get excited about. For the installation experience with Visual Studio 2017, we listened to our customers and we heard them loud and clear. We know that we're too big and we know that we take too long to install. You'll be delighted to hear about the strides we've made with Visual Studio 2017. Specifically, for the Universal Windows Platform Development Tools, we've reduced the size on your disk by about 50%. In addition, the improved installer technology reduces the time to install by about 66%. That means you can now get started developing quicker than ever before. Let's look at the installer to see how it looks. The very first thing you'll notice about Visual Studio 2017 is the new installation experience. As soon as you launch the installer, you will see a set of available workloads to construct the development environment tailored to your specific development requirements. Let's take a look at this in action while I acquire the tools for Universal Windows Platform Development. In order to do this, all I need to do is select the Universal Windows Platform Development Workload. After that, I can then go ahead and click Install, and I'm on my way. Note that C++ Universal Windows Platform Support is actually an optional component now. We've worked with our customers to identify logical breakpoints to optimize the experience for the majority of our developers. Don't worry, though. If you accidentally forget to select the C++ Universal Windows Platform Support option, You'll be reminded in the IDE if you try to create a new project or open a C++ project. The next thing you're likely to notice in Visual Studio 2017 as you build Universal Windows Platform applications is improvements to the XAML editor. For example, I can now remove unnecessary namespaces by hovering and clicking on the light bulb or using the control dot keyboard shortcut. In addition, I can right click anywhere in my namespaces and remove and sort all namespaces. This will ensure consistency across the XAML files in your solution. The next thing we've added is the ability for you to auto-complete namespace references. For example, if I add a new resource to my XAML file that contains an array list, I'm not going to get any sort of XAML IntelliSense or help. And that's because I'm not referencing system.collections in my XAML file. With Visual Studio 2017, I get this auto-completion experience, again, by selecting the light bulb or pressing control dot. Now I can add a reference to my array list in my XAML file. But first I need to add a key, my AL. Now if I want to use array list in my XAML file, I can go ahead and do that. And again, if I'm missing the prefix, I can make sure I add it using the control dot experience. In order for me to show you the next improvement to the XAML editor, First, let me take you back to Visual Studio 2015. Let's say I wanted to change the color of my default grid in my Universal Windows Platform application to pink. If I were to start typing in pink, the IntelliSense immediately navigates me to pink alphabetically, surrounded by Peru and Plum. This is great if I just want pink, but what if I want to see all of the pinks that are available to me? Let me show you how this experience is improved in Visual Studio 2017. Here we have another blank Universal Windows Platform application, this time in Visual Studio 2017. Let me change the color of the background for my default grid again and show you how this experience is better. Immediately when I start typing pink, I can see just after typing PI, I see only the relevant choices. Everything else is filtered away. Now this is just one example, but for every single XAML property that you want to complete with IntelliSense, this sort of filtering will persist. It's really powerful and it has sped up my workflow quite a bit. In order for me to demonstrate some of the new debugging and diagnostics tools in Visual Studio 2017, I'm going to use a more complicated application. The first debugging tool I want to demonstrate happens when you're debugging the application. So for now, I've placed a breakpoint on this .initialize component of my main view. It should be hit before my app even starts. This new debugging tool is called run to click, which lets you execute your code to a specific line of code. Now, I never have to set a breakpoint that I only ever need to be hit one time. 
I can continue to do this until I find the exact line of code that is maybe causing an issue or I need to get more information about it. The next debugging tool I want to demonstrate is for XAML. In Visual Studio 2015, we released the XAML UI debugging tools, which helps you find any issues in your UI. I'm going to use that now to help me find why my name is getting clipped as the cardiologist. So I'm going to use the adorner to select my name, and then I'm going to navigate to the live visual tree in Visual Studio 2017. I can click on this here to find that exact line of code in my XAML, and I can see the properties set. I can also use the Live Property Explorer to inspect the properties of that control. What's new in Visual Studio 2017 that is really powerful is it's called XAML Edit and Continue. So what I can do is I can change the font size of my control, or any property really, while the app is running, reopen my application, observe the changes, and if I'm happy with it, just continue. Now these changes will actually persist so effectively, I can make tweaks to my UI at runtime. I'm really excited about this feature, and I hope you are too. The final new diagnostics tools that's really important for universal Windows platform developers is called XAML UI Analysis. In order to actually use this tool, you need to enable it. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. When you have your application running, under the Diagnostics Tools window, you can navigate to Select Tools and check on UI Analysis. When you do this, you should get a message saying changes to the selected tools will be applied to the next debugging session, meaning you have to stop the app and F5 it again. Let's do that now. Now that my application is running and UI analysis is, is enabled, I can return to the Diagnostics Tools window to take a look at the UI analysis events. First, let me expand the events window size so I can see it more clearly and filter out program output and exception information. I can show you that there are actually several different types of UI analysis events that can occur. Many of these, in fact all of these, are for performance or accessibility related issues. I know for a fact that I had an issue with a radio button control earlier, so I'm actually just going to search for radio to find it. This is telling me UIA elements with the same UIA parent have the same automation name Tylenol 100 milliliter and control type radio button. If I click on the link, I can get information about this issue, including how to fix it. In this case, it says the solution is to set a name in XAML using automationproperties.name. So what I can do is I can double click on this and set its own special automation property name. And the reason this is important is because for customers who might be using screen reader technology, the way they get information about the control that they're navigating to is through the automation properties. This is the default way it works with Universal Windows Platform, and this is really a good way to ensure that your application is successful. So if I go ahead and change this to my radio button, the next time I run the application, this should no longer have a warning. Now, if I were really getting ready to publish this, I would probably provide a more helpful name, but this is at least a start so that my customers know they have navigated to a radio button. What UI analysis does is it puts performance and accessibility at the forefront of your application. Every time you debug your application, you can see if there's any new events that might need attention to ensure the most performant and accessible application possible. So now that I've shown you tools to help you author your application, debug your application, make your application performant and accessible, I want to show you a tool that will help you get your application ready to submit to the store. As I can see at the bottom, my taskbar icon is the default Visual Studio asset, which is this gray X. That's not very helpful and not very pretty for my customers. Let's see how I can improve that with Visual Studio 2017. In order for me to change the assets, I would need to specify them in the package.apex manifest file. So I'm going to navigate to the package.apex manifest, and I can immediately see that the UI has changed to be more modern. Specifically, though, We've invested a lot into the Visual Assets tab, including this Visual Asset Generator feature. Let me show you how it works. I specify a source asset, in this case it's on my desktop, and I can see here I have two different assets. One is my default for my taskbar for my start menu, and the other is my splash screen asset. Before I click Generate, I want to show you what I currently have in my Assets folder in the Solution Explorer so you can see how it changes. 
Here I can see I have all of my default assets. If I hover over it, it's just the X. Let's replace all of those. In this case, I actually don't want to generate the splash screen because I have a special image for that. And I will select all scales. It's going to tell me that it's replacing the default assets, which is fine. I don't need those anymore. So as soon as this is done, I can see all of my assets are now replaced with the new one. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the splash screen. So in this case, my asset has been created so that I don't need padding. And I can go ahead and just select splash screen. It's going to replace, again, the default image. And the next time I run this application, I should see all of the changes in the taskbar, on the splash screen, in the start menu, and everywhere. Now I don't have to create 30 different assets before I'm ready to publish my application to the store. I think that's pretty polished, and I think I'm ready to go. I hope you are as excited about Visual Studio 2017 as I am. To try all of this out and more, go download Visual Studio 2017 today. You can get it at visualstudio.com. If you'd like to stay up to date on all of the current Visual Studio news, I also encourage you to check out the Visual Studio blog. Thanks, and happy coding.